Bucks. If I get drafted by the Bears, I will be excited. Shady, I know you don't give a lot of credit to college players, but Caleb Williams, he's built different. He's yeah. one of those ones, if not the one literally. Is Caleb Williams worth all of the hype, big dog? See, what are we even talking about? Is he worth it? If you could be the number one pick this year, last year you could be the number one pick last year. Whoop. It's a no-brainer. You had C.J. Stroud, you had Bryce Young, you had a lot of great uh, quarterbacks. quarterbacks. But he's that good where he could be the number one in each draft class. Go get that boy and stop playing. Listen, I've seen the GM for the, the Bears, and he's like, question, should I do it? Should I do it? If you want to keep your job, you better go out there and get Caleb Williams. He's that good. He's that talented. He's that generational talent that you haven't seen in a long, long time. When I watch this tape, he reminds me of Patrick Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes, <laughs> and you know what he does. So I would go get him. I had a chance to talk to Caleb a couple weeks ago, and I was like, yo, is it true? Like, you feeling Chicago? You're not feeling him? He said, listen, anywhere I go, they're going to feel what I bring, and that's winning, and that's stats. Mm. And, they and they have a quarterback in years. Like, man, I, I can't even say Nobody's years. Ever They've never. Yeah. Jay Cutler was, he was, he was cool. He was all right. He was cool. He was solid. Right with the Vanderbilt for a reason, but he was cool. Solid. Who else? Rex Grossman? Went to a Super Bowl. And the last one is, is <laughs> Justin Fields. Caleb Williams is the answer. He is, he is, he is, he is. George Taylor, what do you make? Is Caleb Williams worth all of the hype, all the glory, all the attention? Yeah, I think he is. I think he is one of those prospects that is going to reward us for talking about him as much as we do the way that we do. What does give me a little pause oh, is oh. Chicago. Mm. Oh, yeah. Chicago gives me a little pause. They've never had a quarterback throw for more than 5,000 yards. No, they've never had Caleb Williams, but... There are certain organizations that kind of have a reputation for a reason. They're an organization that likes to have a good, tough defense, yeah. a big-time run game, and they, they like to draft offensive linemen. And I, I love all that. I think all those things are super important to winning championships. But it's also important that you have a generational talent at quarterback because we have done this exercise many times. Let's take a look at the quarterbacks that have won Super Bowls for, let's say, the last six years. <coughs> what we got? We got Patrick Mahomes, mm. Baby Goat. We got Tom Brady, grown goat. <laughs> <laughs> we got Matthew Stafford. Yeah. We, have, we have generational talent winning Super Bowl. So if you want to be in that category, if you want to be contenders, if you want to be winning at the highest level late in the <coughs> season, you need to have somebody that is of that caliber. I think Caleb Williams is that. It does make me a little nervous that Chicago has not just a few years of reputation behind them, but their entire history of their organization of not being but, able to but, elevate but, quarterbacks, but... Why can't it... See, because people bring it up all the time. I'm like, well, why can't it just be, like, the, the, the players, though? I, I agree. You know what I'm saying? I, like, I, like... I mean, because this is what we were talking about with Joe Burrow. When okay. Joe Burrow was coming out in the draft, Joe Burrow, I, I think, is the... He's the talent I've, I've felt the most confident about at the number one overall pick ever. I, I, was, I was positive that Joe Burrow was going to be as good as he was in college in the NFL. And he was going to a place that some people said, same thing they were saying about Chicago. Yeah, yeah. Should he ask to not go to, to Cincinnati? And he wanted to go there. He's an Ohio kid, and it all lined up. And he's had incredible success, and we talk about him as the second or third best quarterback in the league now. So I do think that you can overcome when you put all the right things together. But we all still had a little anxiety about what Joe Burrow was going to be able to do, and rightfully so. I think Caleb Williams is a tremendous talent. Mm -hmm. I think he, his talent is the type of talent that translates to the NFL. That's right. I think the comps that we have for him and Patrick Mahomes is what everyone is looking for, which can be a bit dangerous. But the way that Caleb Williams plays, the, 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 the dynamic nature of him as an offensive player, his ability to make decisions, to just make plays, really. And, and take over the game is something that I think Chicago needs and could be the the factor that changes the history of this organization. I agree with both of y'all. I think Caleb Williams is better than what we are all saying that he is. I think Caleb Williams is the best college quarterback I've seen. The reason I'm saying he's the best college quarterback I've seen is because who's the best quarterback currently playing? Best quarterback currently playing is Patrick Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes is the new prototype. The old prototype would have been Peyton Manning, Tom Brady, 6'5", 220 pounds, statuesque. Now the prototype is 6'2", maybe 215, 220. Mobility, can throw off script, can throw off timing, can be creative. That's Caleb Williams. Caleb Williams is to college football what Patrick Mahomes is to the the NFL. And as it pertains to being a college quarterback, Caleb Williams is better in college than Patrick Mahomes was in college. Not to say Caleb Williams will be better in the pros, so understand what I'm saying clearly. But if the prototype is Pat, Caleb Williams is identical to the prototype and probably a little better at the level of play because Caleb Williams is a better runner than Patrick Mahomes is a runner. So Caleb Williams has to be worth the hype. I also think about his coach. 
Lincoln Riley coach, Lincoln Baker Riley. Mayfield. Mm -hmm. Baker Mayfield was the best thing Cleveland had seen since 1988 at the quarterback position. Lincoln Riley coach Jalen Hurts. Jalen Hurts to the, took the Philadelphia Eagles to a Super Bowl in his third year. Lincoln Riley coach Kyler Murray. Kyler Murray winning season, winning season, winning season. Pro Bowler, MVP candidate through seven weeks prior to his injury. And Kyler Murray has shown us flashes of why he was drafted number one overall. So even if Caleb Williams falls somewhere in line with Kyler Murray, Jalen Hurts, and Baker Mayfield, of which I think he's better than all of them, he would be worth the hype. So Caleb Williams isn't even getting as much hype as I think he deserves because he is that good. Drake May is not as good. Michael Penix is not as good. J.J. McCarthy not as good. Jaden Daniels not as good. Caleb Williams is one of one, and I don't think it's particularly close. Do you think that maybe last year's draft is what's tempering everyone from getting so excited about Caleb Williams? Elaborate. What do you mean? I mean, you know, number one overall pick did not do so well this year. We were all very, very quiet about it, I, I, and I rightfully think, so. I, I don't think they're close either. I don't think they are yeah, either. Yeah. But, uh, but we are not really. Why, why do you think that we are not hyping up Caleb Williams the way that we were before this season? I'm hyping before him this. Up. College season started. I, I think Is that, it the way that it ended? I think it's how it ended. I think people are hyping Caleb up. I think that I just think he's so great. Like, I think Caleb Williams is the best college quarterback I have seen if you are comparing him to the prototype of Pat. It's not to say that Caleb had a better college career than Cam Newton. I would put Cam Newton's last year in college up against Caleb's best year. I could put Vince Young's careers. You could put up Tebow's Ooh, careers. I'm not good. saying that you could put up Mike Vick's uh, year when he was a V Take. V Tech, you could put up Burroughs' year, all of those things. But when I look at the prototype, Joy, if the prototype is Pat, who is most comparable to the prototype? That's why I think Caleb's that good. Now, you bring up a good point about Bryce. Bryce underwhelmed. But we had questions about Bryce. Yeah. His size, size. his athleticism, his yeah. durability. Yeah. We had questions about Bryce. Not to mention Bryce Young, quarterback to team that had Devontae Smith plus, was it Gibbs at the running back position? And he, and he had plus a Waddle. Plus, and Williamson. Williamson. And Williams. I mean, Jameson. So we, Jameson, that's what it was. Yep. So that was so many questions as it pertained to Bryce, Williams. but 2-5, you were going to chime in on something. No, because my thing is, like, when I, when I watched Caleb Williams play, I didn't see Bryce Young. I didn't see Bryce Young. Bryce Young's weakness. 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 Bryce Young's you scramble the thought. You can't teach that. The stuff that Patrick Mahomes does, you can't teach that. The, the, I had a blessing to be with the Chiefs and to learn from Andy Reid again, right? And I remember just talking to Pat, and he was like, yo, when I got here, I couldn't really read the coverages, right? Andy Reid taught me how to read some of these coverages, taking the time to put it on, on timing routes, where he was used to just scrambling around, running around, making Throwing plays. So that lets me, lets me know that, yo, you can be taught that. You can't be taught running around and making guys miss off-scripted plays, throwing it. 80 yards on them. You can't teach that. So as a coach, when I look at college players, I'm like, okay, how can this guy fit in my system? That's the first question. The second, the second question is, can, he, can this guy be a winner with my team? And the third question is, yo, can I develop this quarterback? And you can. All them things, he checks all them boxes. You will be a fool to pass up. Caleb Williams. Well, let's talk about the team that would pass up on him. Joy, the Chicago Bears, they own the number one overall pick. Mm -hmm. They had the opportunity to draft Bryce Young last year. They decided to trade out of that position because they had Justin Fields. They still have Justin Fields. I think he's 10. Oh, he's still there? Still there. Okay. Now, he's 10 and 27 as a starter. However, he has shown a lot of flashes. He's a proficient runner, and he's shown at times the ability to throw the ball. This is the most scrutinized conversation in all of sports television. Glad you're here to witness it and to watch it. But should Caleb want to play in Chicago, given that they've never had a 4,000-yard passer ever? Yeah, absolutely. Ignore all that I'm saying about Chicago. Chicago is, an, outside of being an incredible American city, beautiful city, lots of fun. Great city. Mm -hmm. Incredible sports fans, incredible sports history. If you can go to Chicago and win in Chicago, that's the type of legendary stuff that, like, we just forget forget 40 years of not winning. We still talk about teams in Chicago like they happened last year. They, they set the standard for excellence for decades. So if you can go there and be successful, you are going to be in the legend of legends. Just because of the nature of the, the sports energy around that town and the respect that those fans and those organizations still garner, even if they haven't been winning like, Chicago, like the Chicago Bears have. I, and I also think that when we talk about a player saying, okay, I don't want to go to this, this team, which we have seen before. Obviously, the Manning situation is, is the one that's often brought up. 
That was a long time ago. Mm -hmm. Imagine that he does that. Imagine he does what Peyton Manning did and goes and has a rookie season like Peyton Manning had. We are not going to be very kind to him. It was, it, it was awful. It, it, it took some time. This is not the same world. There is this show. There are 50 other shows. There are 10,000 podcasts. There is Twitter. There is uh, every yeah. version of social media. The environment in the world is not the same. We're, we're not as forgiving. We have all of these receipts. So to say I'm not going to go play for an organization, especially an organization like the Chicago Bears, and to go somewhere else. Now, I think he still would have success where else, where else he went, but that is a huge risk. We've seen minor levels of this as recently as Russell Wilson asking out of Seattle and going to Denver and not having the success that he expected to have. It, the sports world is not so kind to that anymore. It's not the same world. There's bigger expectations. There's the idea that you're, you're, you're shunning this team. You have guys that have gone to organizations that have suffered like a Joe Burrow and taken them to the Super Bowl. So the standard is set. You can go to an organization that struggles and take them to the Super Bowl. Joe Burrow just did it. And, and we're saying that we think that Caleb Williams is on par or better than Joe Burrow coming out of college. A, a better prospect, more talented. And he was able to do that. So I don't like the idea of saying I'm not going to go play for this organization, particularly an organization like Chicago. I understand, absolutely understand the trepidation about it because they do have the history they do at the quarterback position. But this is a new world now, and I just think that it's, it's an honor to be drafted. It's an honor to be taken in the NFL, regardless of where you go. To be the number one overall pick comes with a lot of prestige. And to say I'm not going to go play, that, play there in today's culture and environment around sports, I don't think is a good move. I don't think it's a good move, but I don't like him in Chicago. I don't like him in Chicago at all. The reason I don't like him in Chicago is because the head coach, not safe. General manager, not safe. So, Caleb, you get drafted your rookie year to a head coach and a general manager, and then nine months into your tenure in Chicago, you got a new head coach and you got a new general manager. Because if you do not make the playoffs <laughs> as a rookie, please believe that Matt Eberflus is going to be gone because they don't necessarily want him there right now. Ryan Poles already understands that he might be gone because he passed up on Bryce Young and C.J. Stroud for Justin Fields, and that does not appear to have worked out. So I don't like Caleb Williams going to Chicago because they're not safe there. And I don't like seeing co quarterbacks with turnover after turnover after turnover for whatever it's worth. Maybe Baker Mayfield's bad, maybe he's good. But we're not really going to know, at least we didn't know for the first three years of his career, because it wasn't until he got a head coach of the year candidate where he finally went to the playoffs, won a playoff game. Then he went to join the Tampa Bay Bucks and went to the playoffs and won a playoff game once again. Justin Herbert, first years, came out the gate swinging, but he's on his third head coach in five years, if I'm not mistaken. <clears throat> so even Herbert has that excuse because we don't know how good he is because no stability. I don't like him going to Chicago 2-5 because coach ain't safe, GM ain't safe, yeah. and I don't like turnover but for young You don't people. think if you bring in a, a top rookie quarterback um, that you may gain a year or two extra to develop him? Not if you're already on the way out. I think Eberflus is already on the way out because Justin Fields was a top rookie quarterback. Yeah, I, I felt like if they're going to get rid of him, they got rid of him this year. Mm -hmm. There's no reason to bring him back. So for them to bring him back, it's like, okay, we'll give him another shot. They get a rookie quarterback, that adds you another year or two years. I think that on his resume that he gets... Another two years from a rookie quarterback. You got to develop them. Because mm -hmm. you keep talking about how, you know, these, these, these quarterbacks have all these different coaches. So it's hard for them to develop, right? It's like one guy, I'm in his system. I believe the things he's saying, okay, he's going. Ah, now I got to learn, learn from somebody else. Where if you have a guy that, that is your head coach, even if he's on the, the hot seat, you don't give him a year or two to develop a quarterback like Caleb Williams. Think about, though, Frank Wright and the Panthers. Okay. Frank Wright was a Super Bowl-winning offensive coordinator. Mm -hmm. Offensive coordinator for the Eagles in 2017. Helped Carson Wentz to a near MVP year. Emphasis on the word near. Helped Nick Foles come from anonymity to winning a Super Bowl MVP. Frank Wright goes to the Colts. From the Colts, he goes to the Panthers. Panthers have the number one overall pick, Bryce Young. We know that roster was destitute of talent. Frank Wright didn't even last a season. That's true. Yeah. Bryce Young was the number one overall pick. Heisman winning as a freshman at Alabama, and Frank Reich didn't even yeah, last ready. the season. Yeah. And that's not even talking about the strikes that Eberflus already has on his resume and record. That's where I'm just like, I just, I'm not convinced. I mean, I, I, would tell, I, would, I would like to see Kayla Williams in Chicago, right? It's a great market, um, you know, city for him. And the thing, he's coming from USC with a lot of hype. You go to Chicago, you turn that thing around. It might take a year or two, maybe take three years. But once it gets popping and rolling, we're going to fall in love with him even more. And then another thing is I always think about, like, all the greats. So when you go to these cities and do autograph signings, right, you look at the, the, the fan base. The fan base will show you how big you were for that team. Yeah. Right? Some great players that play for the Dolphins, you go to these, you go to these autograph signings, 
you don't see a lot of Dolphin fans. But Chicago, I've been there. I've seen the lines of Erlocker. I've seen the lines of Brandon Marshall. I've seen the lines of, of all these great players that, that, that come from that Chicago team and that franchise. So imagine you get Caleb Williams from USC. That's his, his own baggage right there, right? In Chicago, he balls out. That ain't like a, a super hard division to conquer. Who's the best team over there? What, the, 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 the Packers? Yeah, probably the Packers Ooh, up and coming. Lions. You see what I'm saying? The, or the, yeah, part, Lions. Part of the Lions. Part of the Lions. Right, Lions are a good team. But we got to see more of that. Like, I kind of believe what I kind of don't. I got to see more. <laughs> but I'm saying, if you could take over that division, he'll be a big name. And it's Chicago. But to me, Joy, that's such a big if. That's like, even when I think about the Bengals, you brought up a really good comp with the Bengals. I believe Andy Dalton led the Bengals to the playoffs yeah. maybe six straight seasons, if I'm not mistaken. They have Carson, success. Five straight seasons. That ain't, that ain't that, but that's just that's Carson Cincinnati? Went, no, but I'm saying, like, the, the Bengals weren't, the, clearly their, their organization historically mm -hmm. isn't good, but they weren't, we've never seen them be that destitute. Oh, I mean, right, five right, straight yeah, playoff yeah. seasons yeah, yeah. or something. Yeah. Carson Palmer, clearly he wanted out. We know there was turmoil, all of the things, but Carson Palmer was thought highly of. So we had seen... Really good, competent quarterback play. Five straight playoff seasons is nothing to scoff at with the Cincinnati Bengals. But with the Bears, Mr. Trubisky went 12-4, and four and they're like, you know what, you got to get up out of here. I mean, he wasn't that good. Right? But that's the thing. But even Mitch was as good of a Bears quarterback well, as we've seen since but, Jay. I, but, but hold up. See, Talk see, see th this always go back to this. What your eyes tell you. He could have been 17-0. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't have thought he was a good quarterback, no, right? No. So this is my thing. I, and I'm speaking from a... a, a perspective of being this type of guy that I've been the best running back in Philadelphia Eagles history. That's a good feeling to have. Imagine Kenneth Williams being the best quarterback of all time from Chicago. You don't think that feel good? But no, my, it, it absolutely, it, it's, it's a little bit. Like, your mic's on your jacket. I'm just feeling like, oh. Just remember it. Is it off? Listen, it, I'm feeling good. I know you cold with that nobody, jacket. Nobody can say that, I told My thought though, Joy, is, is many people have tried. Fields is talented. It's feeling good still, though. My bad. Cutler's talented. Mitch was talented. None of them are as talented as Caleb Williams, of All course. Right. I've already said Caleb's the most talented. But also, none of them even got close. Oh. So <laughs> even if Justin F Caleb Williams is as good as we think he is, oh Chicago historically, they hold you back. Yeah, Chicago historically holds you back. But you are, you are something until you're not, right? So, like, we're hoping that Caleb Williams is the catalyst to go to Chicago and change this, this on-paper history that we have about this team that no matter how much you love the Chicago Bears, these are the facts. Mm. So, I, I, I hear you. I do hear you, and my concerns are the same. But my concerns about them aren't enough for me to say, Caleb Williams, you should say I'm not going to play for the Chicago Bears. And the upside to what Shady's talking about and derobing over is that you could potentially be a legend mm -hmm. that we've never really even seen before. Can't because like, like, like you're the, yeah. But Subscribe here to get the latest from Speak and go watch a few segments from our other shows on FS1.